I'm a, I'm a Queens native, uh, and I'm really, really thrilled to be here uh, participating in, in this program, uh, not only because it's, uh, it's, it's good for Queens College and it's good for, for the world, but also because the Center for Ethnic, Racial, and Religious Understanding has been such a key partner uh, in what we're doing and in what we believe in, in terms of what's good for not only for the Jewish community, uh, but what's good for the global community. Um, uh, there are so many resources that the, that the center brings, and I'm really thrilled to be a part of, uh, of, of this program. Um, I've been asked to talk about innovation in the Jewish community, and I've titled this thing uh, A Catalyst for Jewish, uh, Peer Networks, A Catalyst for Jewish Engagement. But before we start uh, with that, I just have to say a brief word to, to lay the groundwork. Um, Got to talk about what's old before you can talk about what's new. Um, so, um, well, here you go. This is the slide with the, uh, the pretty one. Okay, um, I, I, you know, on this slide you see sort of a progression, and, and this, this comes from the fact that Jewish history has had a lot of innovation in just the last uh, 80, 90, 100 years. Um, the Jewish community has a long history uh, over, over uh, thousands of years of not really being welcome. Um, not really having its own place for the majority of its, uh, of its existence, and not really being welcome in the lands in which they lived. Uh, the concept of diaspora is, is well known uh, in the Jewish community, as it is in, in many others. Um, and so that diaspora has led to, uh, to Judaism existing in unwelcome territory or in barely tolerated territory. And what that led to uh, was the community staying sort of insular, staying sort of somewhat homogeneous um, and didn't really allow for too much blossoming. Um, and that all changed with the greatest innovation of all, which is the United States of America. Uh, when Jews started coming to the United States, they found a world that was totally different, that was accepting, that was welcoming, um, that was a place where Judaism could grow uninhibited. And that really started to really come into play uh, over the last 80 to 100 years. Um, Hillel was first, uh, was first um, adopted in 1923, uh, Hillel being the place where Jewish college students could be. There are lots of Jewish organizations across the board for serving lots of different groups, uh, uh, age-wise, ethnic-wise, background-wise, economic-wise, etc. But in terms of the college students, and, and I don't need to tell you how important uh, college students are, um, in 1923, Hillel was, uh, was adopted at University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Urbana and, um, and it was part of, and it was adopted by B'nai B'rith, which is a national, uh, a national organization uh, a year after that. So Hillel really started to take on a national, uh, a national portfolio. Um, it started to become recognized that Judaism on the college campus was something worth investing in, something that was important to, to have. And over time, as the Jewish community grew in America, as it developed in America, as it became more and more welcome, as the a separation of church and state uh, became understood to, by the Jewish community and others to be something real, not just lip service, but something real, um, the, the Jewish community was able to flower in a way that it, it really hadn't had an opportunity to do before. And so um, what the college campus needed to provide uh, as a microcosm for what the uh, organized Jewish community uh, uh, beyond, beyond the college campus provided needed to change. And so you see, and you start with a safe haven and you move through a club and, and different kinds of, uh, of, of roles that Hillel could play. And when you get to the 2000s, especially now that, you know, in, in the 21st century, you know, in a few years, the concept of peer networks um, is really, really important. And, and that's because the definition of what it, has met, what it means to be Jewish has changed radically. Well, it's not entirely accurate. It's grown radically. So most people think of religion as being something that takes place in a house of worship, and that is certainly true in the Jewish community as it is in others. Um, but what it means to be Jewish has grown in its definition to include, far beyond, to include places and people far beyond the walls of the synagogue. There are people who are involved in, in social justice which is not specifically a religious activity, but is grounded in values. There are people who are involved in study, in academics, um, in sports. There are all kinds of different ways to be involved in one's Jewish identity that don't specifically require one to set foot in a synagogue, perhaps ever. Uh, and so the concept that it means, that being Jewish means something different for everybody came to be um, something really important for the college 
the, the college campuses to embrace. Uh, and, and so that's where you get to the, to the idea of a peer network. Um, and I'll get more back to that in a moment. Just to say something about Queens College Hill in particular, Hillel is a national organization, actually international organization, with locations on 550 campuses. Um, but here at Queens College, our mission, um, as you see here, is to create meaningful Jewish experiences for Jewish students in, on campus that encourage students to make enduring commitment to Jewish life, learning, and Israel. It's, a, it's about commitment. It's about something personal. Uh, it's not a blanket statement. It's about what does being Jewish mean to me? Uh, that's, our, that's our objective here at Queens College. And we use the term engagement. Uh, uh, I use that in, in the title, a, a catalyst for peer engagement. This is not outreach. This is not being a missionary. This is not advocacy. This is engagement. Engaging students in the question, what does being Jewish mean to you? And then listening. The listening's the part that most, most of us don't get most of the time. It's the listening that matters to build lasting relationships. And that's really, when you see here, relationship-based engagement means asking and listening and then tailoring the response to be meaningful to the person who you just listened to. It's not something, uh, something constant or something, something uniform. It's particularized and personalized, rooted in something somewhat universal and longstanding with, with thousands of history behind it. So here's a diagram of what peer networks really, really, really are about and how it, how it happens here at Queens College. Um, we have identified, this, this year is the first time we're running this program here at Queens College, four interns. And each intern is responsible for creating 50 new relationships over the course of the year. And some of them are going to be close relationships and some of them are going to be more, uh, uh, more, acquaintance, uh, more like acquaintances. But the idea is 50 new relationships of people who had previously been uninvolved in Jewish life on campus. It's about increasing market penetration, if you think of it from a business standpoint. We're trying to make sure that we have the greatest potential to reach the greatest number of students. And how do you do that? Not by standing on the quad, which is what I thought about doing sometimes. Standing on the quad, standing on a chair, and yelling things about how great it is to be Jewish. Fail. Right? That is a recipe for failure, because that only shares what I think is reasonable and, and, and wonderful about being Jewish and ignores the audience altogether. So uh, we're really about asking and listening. Because we have the opportunity to do that here in this country, here on this campus, here in this moment. So we have four interns, each of which is responsible for 50 relationships. That's 200 new connections, 200 new students, who had previously been uninvolved in Jewish life on campus, who are now going to be touched, now going to have meaningful ex Jewish experiences. So that's the concept. Uh, okay, now here's the theory. You take up, you create a positive memory. Now the positive memory comes from, I'm, talk I'm talking to you. We're, we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation that's positive. People like to be social, but they don't like to be overwhelmed. They don't like to be told what to do. People love to talk about themselves more than they like to talk about anything else. So you create a positive memory by putting together two people who learn to care about each other. There's knowledge. The, the, the intern uh, gets training and also comes with their own passion for being Jewish that is connected back to this long history. Now again, it doesn't necessarily look the same as someone else. Do the, our interns don't look the same, but they're coming from a place of knowledge, uh, and, and deep self-connection. So once you connect a positive memory with the access to something that is, that is ancient but relevant in the, in the current world, you gain a sense, you start, the, 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 tar the target audience starts to gain a, a sense of, of Jewish self-confidence. I am religious enough, even if I'm not religious at all. I am worthy to participate in this conversation, even though I don't know, maybe I went to a Jewish, Jewish school, maybe I had a bar mitzvah, maybe I didn't, maybe I've never seen a Jew before in my life, but I know that I, have, that I am Jewish. I am worthy to participate in this conversation. And then it also introduces a sense of people and community. You're not just an island. You're part of a community. You're part of a group of people who similarly identify with something about what it means to be Jewish. It doesn't have to be the same thing, but the Jewish piece 
is the common denominator. And that's really an important point to raise, which is that being Jewish is a common denominator because of the diversity within it. So you put these four pieces together, and then the person you're talking to starts to own their own Jewish experience, their own Jewish identity. I've now had a constructive, positive Jewish experience. And that, we hope, and we do everything we can to make sure that that leads to an enduring commitment to Jewish life, which is really what we're after in the first place, going back to our mission statement. Notice, again, this says nothing about the synagogue. It says nothing about the high holidays. It says nothing about keeping kosher. It says nothing about keeping the Sabbath. It says nothing about any of those things. It's an enduring commitment to Jewish life that is enduring because it is personally meaningful. Now, that doesn't mean that a person stops there. We hope that, that students, and we, we, we try and foster it such that students are on their own Jewish journey. That doesn't stop when they graduate college. It makes connections to other places, to what, ha what happens next, what other opportunities are out there to participate in things that I, mean, that I really care about. But it's that, that commitment that they're going to make during the college years as adults, not as children, and as college students, not after it's too late, um, to participate and, and feel it as something important. Um, just to we'll go quickly through this, you see how this grows. Either, these are each individual networks. We can grow the number of networks, and therefore we can grow the number of, uh, of institutions, a number of, of communities. There's lots of growth that can take place uh, by, by picking on these individual networks. Um, you can see how the campuses add to each other, and you end up with a, with a large community of people who have had similar experiences. And then there's this piece, which is really, really cool, which is, it's almost like a game of shoots and ladders. Each person's um, tailored uh, experience and program that they participate in takes them someplace. You use it as a jumping off point. You take the ladder from square two up to square 18, because that's your path. That's the way we sort of think about Jewish engagement. This, I don't expect you to read. It's way too much and way too small. But this is some of the assumptions and the concepts and the reasons why we know this is going to work. And this program has proven to be transformative in other, uh, in other campuses uh, across the world. So really, really excited to have it here at Queens College. Um, you can always reach me uh, at uri at qchillel.org. I also have a, 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 a CUNY address. Our website is qchillel.org. I'm happy to talk about this all day and all night. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. I hope that this is a model that can be useful in your community, in your work. Um, please feel free, pass it on.